Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your guidance, Father, as we try to understand your ways. May your name be blessed, Yehoshua HaMashiach, author and captain of our salvation. Amen. Hello, brothers and sisters. Today we will be discussing virginity, and we will be looking at virginity through the eyes of the Lord rather than through the eyes of men and what they have made of virginity. And we will also be looking at the blood covenant that is connected to virginity. So the goal here is to have a better understanding of the underlying principles and the spiritual consequences of virginity. And to do that, to better understand the mind of the Lord, uh, we go to Scripture. We now go to Revelations chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. So here we get a first element which is very important. There is such a thing as a seal. Certain books have a lock on them. In order to open them, to have access to the content of these books, which is secret, you need to have the key. And we can also make a parallel with scrolls. Scrolls are precious. They contain secret information and they have a seal so that they are made authentic in that they haven't been manipulated. And they can be sealed so that the information and the mysteries they contain are not revealed before the time that the seal should be broken. And so already here we see that in the scriptures there is such a concept as secrecy, mystery, and a seal being used or a lock being used specifically to authenticate a document or a book and guarantee that it hasn't been opened yet. So we see that through a book that could only be opened by the Lion of the tribe of Judah who was certified, qualified, and had been deemed worthy to open the book and break the seals thereof. Now it's important to understand that first aspect. Moving on, we also have in the Bible the seal of the Holy Spirit, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, tell us that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit after that we have come to Christ, and that this seal is the earnest of our inheritance. This is not of small significance. The earnest of our inheritance is the seal of that we have received as being children of the Most High. So we are sealed once again. And let's look at another context in which a seal is mentioned. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, Paul says this, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? 
Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Paul is telling the Corinthians that their receiving the gospel is proof that the work that he made among them was not in vain, and therefore they are the seal of his apostleship. And so here the seal becomes a testament of having achieved something. And so we see two meanings here with the seal. First, it establishes that something has not been opened before the time, and that there is some secrecy attached to that thing which has remained sealed, that there is a precious content that has remained sealed. And we also see that there is a meaning with the seal that it correlates to an achievement to signify that there has been something achieved. So thereby we see the, the definition of a seal. Now, when we get to the woman, to the eyes of the Lord, she was made with a hymen. And therefore, that hymen is the image of a seal. And not only is it the image of a seal spiritually, physically there is a hymen. And this hymen is the woman's seal. It is the seal which confirms that the secrets of that woman, the beauty and glory of that woman, has yet to be discovered. Because a woman is like a beautiful scroll. There are great treasures hidden in the woman, but they are not for everyone to know, to discover. They should only be discovered by her husband. And that happens at an appointed time. In John chapter 7, verse 6, Jesus says, You men, your time is always good, but my time is not yet come. And so there is a time appointed for everything. Even Ecclesiastes chapter 3 tells us that there's a time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to laugh and a time to cry, and so forth. And so for a woman who is sealed, she was made this way. There is an appointed time for her seal to be broken. And this seal authenticates her virginity. And so she's a beautiful scroll, and the seal has to be torn at a given time, an appointed time, by her husband. And she's also akin to a book that is locked. And the key to that book is not to be used by just anybody, but rather the Lord gives it to a specific man that he has designated for that woman because he is the one to discover the treasures in that book. He is the one to open the chests and discover the treasures and the mysteries in the chests. And so the nature of the woman is a glorious nature. And that's why the Lord says that woman is the glory of man. But what glory remaineth to the man when another man has come with the key, being unauthorized, and has opened this book. When another man comes unauthorized and breaks the seal of the precious scroll that is the woman, a beautiful woman, and all women are beautiful. Don't let the devil make you believe you're not beautiful women. It is written in Genesis chapter 6 that the angels looked upon the women. When men had daughters born unto them, the angels saw that they were fair. Granted, some women have a gift of beauty, where they have a gift that is even more glorious than other women. And it was the case for Sarai, Abraham's wife, to the point where Pharaoh and Abimelech coveted her, and Abraham lied about her being his wife. But these are uh, cases where the woman has been blessed with even more beauty than the others. But all women are beautiful. It is mentioned that the angels saw that they were fair, not some of them, all of them. And so you are beautiful, 
even if the devil wants you to think otherwise you are beautiful and the Lord sees you as a precious gem a precious daughter and on that day when he comes according to Malachi chapter 3 verse 17 he will gather his gems and take them and save them from the trouble to come on that day he will make up his jewels and so getting back to seals the Lord doesn't want an unauthorized man to come and discover the treasures of a woman who is akin to a scroll or a book with a lock with a seal and we see from Revelation chapter 5 that the person who comes to break the seal actually needs to be deemed worthy to do that not anybody can come and break the seal to look at a scroll but those who are authorized having been examined having been tested and those who have prevailed and earned the right to examine the content the secrets in this book in this scroll and the line of the tribe of Judah is the one who was found worthy to open that book and so we see from this that the woman has a nature akin to a scroll akin to a book where there are secrets inside of her and she is made in her makeup with a natural seal which is the hymen but we need to understand these things because society will not explain these things to you trying to stop you from understanding your identity who are you why are you the way you are who are you because the Lord made you a certain way and there is great symbolism in the way he made you but you need to understand it because when he looks at you he doesn't look at you with eyes that are the eyes of men he looks at you with eyes that are his different than the eyes of men who want to look at you as an object he looks at you as a precious stone precious gem first Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 when he lays eyes on you he sees something different than men see who just want to covet and lust after you he sees a very precious daughter of his and so he wants you to understand the nature that he has poured upon you you have beauty and this beauty is so glorious that he has given you hair for a covering and that is spoken about in first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 15 and remember how Rebecca covered herself before she walked towards Isaac and it's only after that Isaac discovered her in the tent when he went in unto her so the covering it is mentioned that no man had known Rebecca just yet she still had the mystery of her intact the secrecy of her intact and that is at the core of the holiness and purity of a woman so we've seen to summarize this thus far that there are certain things to which secrecy is attached books they can have locks they can have seals scrolls have seals and from this we understand that certain things by nature imply that there is a secrecy about them that there is a mystery about them and we saw from Revelation 5 that the person to come to discover these things has to be deemed worthy to do that or else we are outside of the philosophy and understanding of the scriptures so let us continue so because woman has a hymen which is a seal therefore do we understand that what we have just explained applies to her because the Lord is a Lord of order he is a Lord of coherence where there is a seal there is a mystery behind where there was a veil in the tabernacle there was a glory behind it you see 
we have to stay in the Lord's mind here if we're going to understand more about virginity. Now, let us get to the hymen when virginity is lost. So naturally, when virginity is lost, the hymen breaks and there is a bloodshed. Blood is shed. And this is not without significance. If you look under the Old Covenant, and I will put the scriptures in the description, under the Old Covenant, women had to put forth the proof of their virginity by showing a piece of cloth that had a blood stain on it. When they consumed the marriage, this piece of cloth would be stained with blood, and they would present that and put that forward to say, here is the proof that I was a virgin, because it was an important matter, because it was the seal of their holiness, of their worth, that they were precious virgins. And so there had to be an evidence that they were virgins, and that evidence was sought. And this again tells us how precious the woman is, to the point where if she has known another man, then is there a problem because an unauthorized reader has read the book. An unauthorized reader has torn the seal of a scroll and read the scroll. So how can the husband now come and claim to be the one who is going to discover the content of the scroll, the content of the book, which is secret, which is precious, which is a mystery. Who goes to the supermarket to grab an item which is in a package and the lid is torn? Who takes that and says, I will buy it? We all put it back and take the next item which is packaged and the package is intact. Even everyday life teaches us that we go for things that are intact. If a seal is broken, something is off. Now, the aspect of blood being shed is not without importance. Not only is there a seal, but that seal being broken results in blood being shed. What is the significance of this? Let us go to Exodus chapter 24, verses 7 and 8. To put you in context, this is after Moses has explained the laws to the people. What does he do after? Verse 7, And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord hath said will we do, and be obedient. Verse 8, And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, and said, Behold the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you, concerning all these words. Where there is blood shed, there is also a covenant made. And this is very significant. When a woman loses her virginity and the hymen is broken and there is a shed of blood. Blood is shed. A covenant is made. And that covenant, in the eyes of the Lord, is supposed to be a covenant about marriage made between a man and a woman, a husband and his wife. So, the blood that is shed pertains to a covenant being made. It is a blood covenant to really uh, reflect the importance of marriage. Because Jesus told the people, For the hardness of your hearts did Moses allow you to write a letter of divorcement. But in the beginning it was not so. The man and the woman, they were one flesh, a great mystery. And what the Lord hath joined, let no man separate. See, marriage to the eyes of the Lord, it's an, it's an incredible covenant of a great magnitude. And to 
confirm that it is made a blood covenant the first man with whom you make a blood covenant by losing your virginity is tied to you for life whether you want it or not in the spirit you have made a blood covenant with uh, that man who took your virginity the woman is made that way and there is a hymen not by chance it is not random it is by design to officialize the blood covenant of marriage still not convinced let us see what the Lord says in Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 yet ye say wherefore because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth against whom thou hast dealt treacherously yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant verse 15 and did not he make one yet had he the residue of the spirit and wherefore one that he might seek a godly seed therefore take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth verse 16 for the Lord the Elohim of Israel saith that he hateth putting away and I'll stop there the Lord is saying I am a witness of that covenant that you make with the wife of thy youth it is the blood covenant sealed by the shed of blood between the husband and the wife such a powerful covenant it makes them one flesh it is a great mystery and so the Bible tells us that the man will leave his mother and his father to go and be joined to his wife and they shall be one flesh and the Lord says I am a witness to that covenant when there is this first intimate encounter and blood is shed I am a witness to that blood covenant just as Moses made a blood covenant by sprinkling bl blood on the people and they confirmed this is the covenant of the Lord and we will do everything that the Lord has told us and commanded us and so this is very powerful now the question is this if you are losing your virginity to someone who is not your husband you are still making a covenant but with whom are you making a covenant in the spirit you're making a covenant with this man in the flesh but in the spirit with whom is that covenant made because we are told about Cain and Abel that the Lord agreed Abel's sacrifice but that Cain's sacrifice he did not regard it and we learn in 1st John chapter 3 verse 12 that Cain was of the wicked one and the reason he slew his brother is because Cain's works were not good while Abel's works were good and we also learn in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 that by faith Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain so when you are in your own way making a blood covenant and there is a bloodshed to whom who are you honoring through that shedding of blood are you honoring the Lord because you are losing your virginity and your hymen is broken in the way that the Lord intended it to happen because if you're not there are only two masters if you're not honoring the Lord then are you honoring the devil and you are therefore in the spirit making a covenant with the devil you see I made that mistake when I decided to uh, make my partner go through two abortions blood was shed and I was ignorant back then and on both occasions I sacrificed a child to Molech the demon to which people used to sacrifice their children to 
So that's why I explain in my confession video about abortion that abortion is murder and it's a blood sacrifice that you're making to a demon. And I entered into an alliance with demons unbeknownst to me in my ignorance and as Paul says the Lord forgave him because he did things ignorantly in unbelief and likewise I did and I repented and confessed publicly so that the Lord uh, forgave me as he explains in 1st John chapter 1 if we confess our sins uh, he is merciful and faithful to forgive us bless the Lord so getting back to the topic at hand when you had this bloodshed, if it was not to honor the Lord, who were you honoring? The devil. Do you start to understand how important it is to follow the word? The Lord has created you a woman with a hymen. You then notice that you have a seal. And then you look in the word and you see the things that are sealed, whether they are books or scrolls. Then is there a person appointed to break that seal or a person given the key to open a treasure chest? To find out the mysteries of what is inside, the information that is contained within whatever is sealed, and that someone must be deemed worthy to have access to that content at an appointed time. So therefore, you must understand that these things apply to you as a woman because you are sealed. And the Lord is a Lord of order. Now, the Iman further will result in blood being shed when it is broken. And we saw in scripture that when a covenant is made, there is blood involved to confirm the covenant. Now, as was the case with Cain and Abel, to whom are you consecrating this bloodshed? To the Lord, because you're losing your virginity in the context of a marriage to the eyes of the Lord? Or are you losing your virginity in fornication where you're honoring the devil with that bloodshed and entering into an alliance with him? That's thunder outside. Uh, it's raining here, so that was thunder. And it came at a time where the Lord is telling us with wrath that he doesn't look well upon fornication and losing your virginity in that context. So that was a timely thunder. So let us con We further saw that the Lord declared that he is a witness to that moment where that blood covenant is made and he records and registers in heaven that a covenant was made and that this woman becomes the wife of that man she becomes the wife of his youth in the beginning it was not so that you could separate from that man with whom you covenanted in your youth because you are one flesh so the lord does not approve sin and therefore, if you're fornicating, you happen to lose your virginity in fornication, it's a sin. Even if you are already engaged. It was the case for Joseph and Mary. Joseph found out that Mary was with child. And in his own understanding, he thought that she had cheated on him and he wanted to put her away. So he thought that another man had had access to the treasures of his wife. That another man had read the scroll. The precious scroll that uh, was his beautiful wife you are beautiful you are precious and you have to understand the worth that you have because you are the glory of the man and you were given hair to cover this glory magnificent beauty that you have been given as a gift and it is a glorious gift So now we're going to move on to another uh, part of the scriptures to have an illustration of this and how serious it is when these principles are bypassed. So we will go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 34, the defiling of Dina. And Dina, the daughter of Leah, 
which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Sheshem, the son of Hamor the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her, and lay with her, and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel, and spake kindly unto the damsel. And Sheshem spake unto his father Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dina, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come. And eventually what will happen is um, Jacob's sons will orchestrate a massacre of uh, the people of this man who defiled Dina because they were very upset uh, with the situation. But Jacob, on the other hand, at verse 30, explained that he wasn't looking for that kind of trouble, even though himself uh, did not approve of what was done. And so here again, we see that Dina was defiled, a virgin. A virgin taken by a man who decided that he was going to self-proclaim. He was going to be self-proclaimed, worthy to open this scroll and tear the lid and tear the seal he authorized himself to do that he decided he was going to look into this book and break the seals of this precious woman dina and he defiled her and if you look at the term defiled in a hebrew lexicon it carries the meaning of humiliation he humiliated her and as if that weren't enough he added fuel to the fire because it is only after he after he tried being with her that he made up his mind and said, yes, I find her uh, worth my time. I'm going to marry her, which implies that he actually had reserved the right upon himself to say, no, I'm not going to marry her after having been with her. And that adds fire to the fuel. Because to see this kind of attitude where he wasn't the one with the key, he wasn't the one deemed worthy to break that seal, to tear that seal, he went in and did it anyways, allowing himself to think he had a choice afterwards about whether or not he would be her husband. And to add again fuel to the fire, he was an uncircumcised and that made it worse because he was not part of their nation. So this is the defiling of Dina. And now to confirm to you that even once a woman has lost her virginity, it is still considered uh, a polluting act for her to be read by someone else than the person appointed and authorized to read her as a scroll. And for this, we go to chapter 3 of Jeremiah. It is written, They say, If a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. You see how the Lord is angry when the people turn from him, and he sees it has whoredom. He tells the people, you go away from me to worship other gods and then you come back to me. You are polluted. And it's also a representation of the wife going unto another man and then returning to her husband. She is polluted. Do you see how sacred the wife is and how easily she can become desecrated? She is the man's glory, 
And if she's polluted, she can no longer do that. And if you look at Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12, A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. It is very important for a woman to maintain uh, that seal of holiness. And not only is the woman glorious being, being the wife of her husband, but from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we also learn that there is even greater glory in a woman who is still a virgin because of that seal still being in place. And that's why it's written in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7 that the man who gives his virgin to marry, he doeth well because being married, she can be a mother and have children and be a good uh, spouse to her husband. But it is also written that the man who does not give his virgin to marry and has her virgin, he doeth better. Be why? Because it is written again in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that the wife is concerned about how she can make her husband happy, whereas the virgin is concerned about how she can be. So she has him consecrate to the Lord. And so we see that there's an even greater glory in being a virgin, but there is also great glory in being a wife and a virtuous woman. And so these are things that I want you to understand uh, as women, not that men don't have anything that they should abide by, but I'm making this video more specifically about women since I'm dealing with the seal of virginity and the hymen. Uh, I, I, I think uh, most young women don't have this information. They don't have this symbolism explained to them. And that's why just because they don't understand actually the worth that they have, they may fall into the trap of the devil and become promiscuous or also they may be having uh, difficult circumstances and i'm not saying that i would do better than them uh, or fare better than them uh, under the same circumstances my message is that i was a wicked person myself before the lord uh, by his grace took me out of darkness and into his marvelous light my message here is one of scripture to show you the underlying philosophy and principles of virginity and how the woman is sealed and that from that point there are consequences to being sealed in terms of the secrecy and the mystery of keeping that glory sealed up until a time when the person deemed worthy to open and tear the seal shows up and that's the husband and the woman is giving hair for a covering and she's told to dress modest to contain that glory and keep it a secret for the glory of her husband. And we saw that the blood loss, the shed of blood, is actually linked to a blood covenant that is made. But who are you making the blood covenant with? This blood covenant that Moses made with the people to confirm the covenant, this covenant to which the Lord is a witness, and he hates for that covenant to be broken. Or... Uh, put in place in an inappropriate setting and he hateth putting away the Lord is a witness the Lord saw everything is naked to the eye of he with whom we have to do we cannot do anything in secret and so if you uh, have lost your virginity in a context where it was not to honor the Lord don't feel condemned do pray to the Lord he is the one who can make you whole again he is the who can renew your virginity spiritually so turn to the Lord for rescue because it says in Isaiah 59 that his arm is not too short to save anyone to help anyone and anybody who thinks that actually has to ask themselves the question have I forgotten how he took me out of the gutter and so his arm is not too short to save turn to the Lord for counsel if you feel that you have not honored him regarding this issue and if you're still a virgin I hope that now you understand more of the Lord's perception regarding that his wisdom his understanding and the way he sees it and not how the enemy sees it and how the world is leading women and young women to believe that they have no worth 